Are your baby chicks growing really rapidly and you want them out of the house? Let's show you how to build an outdoor brooder for your own yard. Welcome back to Bok Bok Bouquet. My name is Ricardo and today I'm going to show you how to build an outdoor brooder for your baby chicks. It also functions as a hospital pen, a grow out or integration or broody pen. A list of things that you're going to need. Go ahead and take a screenshot here in just a moment. So when you go to the store, you know exactly what to buy. We're going to be using nine two by twos, some two foot chicken wire. This is half inch hardware cloth. And then you'll also need a three foot half inch chicken wire. You'll need a staple gun, a pair of hinges, a handle so you can have access to their lid or door. And the only thing I do like to do is get this two inch extender for the handle because they usually come with like a little one inch one and it's not thick enough for the two inch piece of wood that we're using. So I like to buy the little two inch ex extender here for the handle. Let's get to wood cutting. The brooder we are building today will be a five by three by two foot tall. Now you can take in any size that you might want for your own personal needs. We've even built one that's narrow enough to fit through our chicken run. And that was only like a two foot wide one. We'll put it somewhere, somewhere here on the screen. We're gonna start by cutting our five foot pieces. Make sure you are wearing some eyewear to protect your eyes from the sawdust. Lately, I've been wearing a mask while I do my cuts too. So I'm not inhaling all that stuff in. And I've been protecting my ears too from the loud noise. So I got my six pieces there for the five footers. Now, when I say it's gonna be two foot tall, to be specific, it's actually gonna be 24 and a half inches tall. The two foot hardware cloth that you buy, it's usually right at two feet. And if I make this two feet, sometimes it's a little crooked on the wire. And then you'll have these like little edges that come out of the frame. And I don't like it because then you have to go in there and cut your wire. So I allow myself a little extra half inch so that when we have a little wiggle room when we're stapling the hardware cloth to the frame. Now we're gonna gotta cut our, our width here at 33 and a half to give you a little wiggle room. And then I'm gonna use whatever was left over from that wood to actually cut our 45 degree angles that we're gonna brace the corners with. We're just gonna set our miter saw here to 45 degrees. The length of this varies. You can cut it to any length you want. I'm just gonna use whatever piece I got right here. This happens to be a, cause I know some of you will ask, that's nine and a half inches. So it's gonna be a nine and a half inch, 45 degree angle here. Once you've made that first cut, you're gonna wanna just flip it around this way so that you're cutting this way and it meets at your corner, nice and perfect. All right, so now we'll take our five footers with our 21 and a half inch cross beams here. And we're gonna start connecting the corners together using this cool corner clamp. It's made by Pony, it's sold on Amazon. So I will leave you a link to, to that in the description on where you can find them. They just twist right here, connecting your corners. It guarantees you a 90 degree angle here. So you, know, you have a perfect square. Holds it for you like this. Now we're just gonna go ahead and start pre-drilling some holes. I'll do two vertical ones in each corner. And that is so that we can hold it nice and tight. And then also I like to pre-drill because if you don't, chances are is that your wood would end up splitting on you if you don't pre-drill a hole if you just go under with a screw. So I like to pre-drill and then add our screw in there. Take this one off and we'll go to the other side. That way. And drive. Okay, now this is where those 45 degree angles come into play. We're gonna put one in that corner and the other one in this corner here like this, just to give it a little bit more retention so your brooder's not wobbly and gets loose over time. This will give it a lot more strength. 
So now we'll take our 33 and a halves and two of the 21 and a halves at the corners. Okay, wait, what? Yeah, let's get back to the program. So that's one and we're gonna do one more. Now we just need to make ourselves a lid for the top, but it's the second day of spring here in California and it's already 85 degrees out. It's hot. I'm gonna go get me something to drink. For the meantime, I'm gonna show you some cute baby chicks and then we'll be right back. And we're back. I hope you guys enjoyed our baby chicks. So we're gonna go ahead and do our lid now. We're gonna take our six footers and now instead of the bracing being 21 inches long, we're gonna use our 33 and a halfs. Scoot that over there. But it's the same technique here. We're just gonna connect the corners. Except that the lid is a little wider because uh, it's going to be three foot wide, not just 21 and a half inches tall. Well, 24 once you put all everything together. But let's go ahead. All right, that will be our lid that opens and closes. Now comes the most dreadful part, and that is putting the hardware cloth on all this framing. I like to get me some weights because when working with some of this hardware cloth, it's not the easiest thing to lay out. So I like to use these iron weights. If you have a couple of 10 pound weights at home, use them. So the idea is that I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down like this. Just try and line it up as best as possible. And then that's where I'm gonna put my weight to hold that down for me. And see, being that we gave it a half inch, that gives us about, I would like to say a quarter inch on each side, but it's about an eighth of an inch on each side. If we would have done exactly two feet, it's very likely that this hardware cloth wouldn't be perfectly two feet and it would be sticking out an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, and it just throws me off. I don't like it. So I like to allow myself a little wiggle room we make our way down to this corner here. And then we're also going to use some weights, but we're gonna put another weight right there or out here so we can hold our hardware cloth outside like that. Let's see, make sure it's still lined up pretty nicely and it is. So I'm gonna just tack right here, 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 and here. And then we're gonna go ahead and get it cut so we don't have this big old roll in the way. So we're gonna come out here to the end, we're gonna stretch it out and I think it's gonna go to there. So I'm gonna cut right here and see, you can cut a few at a time. So once we got it laid out, we're gonna go ahead and staple gun the rest. Now, this, is, this will be somewhat predator proof, but I wouldn't let my chick sleep here overnight unless we were to add some big old washers, about a one, and a half inch washer and some screws so that a coyote or a raccoon or a possum or whatever sort of predator you might have in your area wouldn't just break through this hardware cloth. You can make it predator proof and you add a predator apron with a skirt around the entire thing. But for us, we're just gonna add a little hardware cloth to contain the chicken. So we're just gonna use a traditional staple gun. You guys get the idea? We're gonna do that four more times. We got three more walls and our lid will be the same process. Welcome back. All right, so we have all of our walls set with some of the hardware cloth. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, assemble this thing. It's gonna be super easy, you'll see. I'm hoping that by seeing this, some of you might wanna just go ahead and try and build your own brooder because it's, it's really not all that hard. I said doing the hardware cloth is a little tedious, but other than that, it's pretty fun seeing this come together. 
especially when you do it yourself. Gives you a little gratification when it's all done. I'm gonna go ahead and use some of these clamps too, uh, purchased from Lowe's. I'll leave the link in the description from Amazon as well because they sell it there also. But I usually tend to buy everything from Lowe's. That's, that's where I like to shop. Well, not sponsored, but that's just usually where I go for everything. This is a good time to mention how this is a five by three and a half, because remember we added that extra half inch. But the reason that these are cut to 33 inches and not 36 and a half inches is because you got 33 and a half right here, but then you're adding an extra inch and a half here and another inch and a half from there. So that's one and a half, one and a half, that's three inches plus a 33 and a half. Guess what? From here to there, it'll now be 36 and a half inches. So you just got to take that into consideration when you're measuring and putting your things together. And that's it, we have our four corners and I'm starting to kind of hide behind the brooder back here. But you can imagine how it's coming together. This is gonna be a nice space here for your chicks to play outside in the dirt or grass, whatever you got. And now we just gotta put a lid on it. Now it's time to attach our hinges there. I think this is a two and a half inch hinge. It comes in a pair. So we're just gonna go ahead and find a spot that we like to place them. It's gonna have one here, one at the other side. When you pull up on this side, that should work. It, there we go, it's a functioning lid door. So we have our handle, our two inch screw or bolt. We just want to figure out where we're going to put it. And I like to just center it there to the brace up on top. So I'm going to come up here and look and that's center right there. Mark it. We'll do our first hole and then we mark the other side. We got to go all the way through. And oh yeah, that reminds me, check out these cool boots that the brand High C was kind enough to send me. They got the steel toe up in the front because it always happens that I would always drop a piece of wood on my foot while I'm wearing my other boots and it hurts. These are still two super comfortable work boots. We'll leave the link in the description and if you use our code Bok Bok, you save some money. So check them out, Hi C. The link will be in the description. Just gotta get it started here. Okay. Good. Using that screwdriver, we just tighten that. Gonna get it real tightened in here. And that's it. All right. Well, that completes our build for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Ricardo, and we'll see you next time. Thank you guys.